team which was revealed last night on our air and certainly lots of tough spots here. in terms of position players Sal Perez behind the plate Marcel Ozuna's DHing the hot corners Manny Machado then Fernando Tatis DJ LeMahieu and Freddie Freeman real good battle of MVPs there are first base him and Abreu in the outfield it's Mookie Betts Mike Trout Juan Soto tough to quibble with that kind of outfield you look at offense and defense and in terms of the pitching selections for the all MLB team first team here's how it looks like how about this rotation I got Trevor Bauer Shane Bieber couple Cy Young Award winners you Darvish Jacob DeGrom a two time winner and Max Fried Liam Hendricks and Nick Anderson two outstanding relievers as well. Uh, Obviously, there's a lot to chew on there, Joel. We'll, we'll dig into the first one, which is Manny Machado being at third base. It's interesting. When you look at the MVP race, there was some thought Tatis should be one of the top three guys. Machado just edged him out. Tatis certainly got quiet the last couple weeks of the season. Machado was more consistent. But what do you think of the choice there, Machado, at third base? Yeah, the, the folks at MLB were nice enough to let me do an official ballot this year. And I had, I actually had Tatis and Machado. And I thought both positions, I could see the Jose Ramirez and Trey Turner when it was really what I felt like such a 50-50 toss-up in both situations, I went with the player I thought was better on defense, maybe influenced again by watching the postseason and seeing just the value of keeping the other team to 27 outs and maybe even 26 or 25 by making some outstanding plays. And it was just so close at those two places. But I'm, I, I'm telling you, it was 50-50 at those two places, and I'm just telling you how my mind works. Yeah, you know what's it. fascinating me, guys, is that um, – I think Ramirez had a better offensive season. I, yeah. I don't think that's dis, uh, disputable. I think he did. But it's, a, it's, it's incredible how far defensive metrics and the importance of defense to come in our game. It wasn't long ago. I mean, you look back, you know, 15, 20 years ago in our game, defense was looked at as an important vehicle for the guy behind the plate and the guy playing at shortstop. All the other positions, you just didn't think about the same way. Now defense is getting measured in a way at every position. I think it's great. I think it's great for our game. I think Machado deserves it because he is an elite defensive third baseman. Now you talk about the numbers, Dan. You're right. Ramirez's numbers are, in fact, better than Machado's. Close, but still better, at least on OPS+. Plus. Let's go then to catchers. So Sal Perez ends up being the guy, but I know you're a big fan of Travis Darno. what he did with the Braves. Well, again, this is another one for me. Perez had a better offensive year than Darno. But I had Darno because when you look at what Darno did with that Braves pitching staff this year, I mean, they had one starter for the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. They had one and a half for the second half of the season, <laughs> and they won their division. Yeah. And we don't give enough credit at times for the catcher's ability to work with all of those different kind of pitchers to get them to the point that the team has a chance to turn the game over to the bullpen. And then, oh, by the way, he's got to catch all those different bullpen guys. But I think Travis Darno, there wasn't a far enough separation in the offense that his defensive ability shouldn't have put him number one in this category. Yeah, I actually had Real Muto on my first team and Darno on my second team. I think we saw in those numbers, you know, it was a 60-game season. I thought attendance really mattered this year for everybody, and Perez was at 37 games. I know Real Muto, a lot of those games were DHs, but he was available. He played. He was used because of his bat, uh, and I used him there. And I, and and this is maybe where the regional baseball influenced me because I had Real Muto as the guy, and I was Perez Darno for the second team. And is it just that I saw so much of Darno in regional baseball in New York? This year, where yeah. Atlanta plays 14 games against the two New York teams, and Darno, it felt like played great in, in every one of the. It felt like Darno and uh, uh, Dansby Swanson played great in every game I saw them play this year. <laughs> Mets and uh, you know, like sometimes you do get sure that that bias of of seeing it. But I do think the uh, to Dan's point. That Atlanta staff changed an awful lot this year from what we imagined it was going to be in March to what it turned out to be, and it was excellent, and you do probably want to give the catcher some of the credit for that. Soroka, huge injury, Fulton Evans DFA'd. Uh, Felix Hernandez elected not to play. I mean, they, Cole they Hamels.